Hey everybody, Ted Forbes again, and in the last movie we talked about how to embed an audio file into your web page, and in this film what I want to do is I want to talk about browser support. Now, you're probably thinking, what? why do I have to support multiple browsers? Isn't this HTML5 and isn't it easy and all that wonderful stuff? The problem is, is the audio file that we embedded, this is an MP3 file, and an MP3 is basically, it's a, it's a, a, a way to compress an audio file so that the file size is really small, but the quality still stays, you know, intact uh, for the most part. And and the problem is here is that the people who develop the MP3 file format, or any file format for that matter, generally these are companies and they own patents on these things. And while on the surface that doesn't mean too much to you or me, we don't have to pay for it if we embed in an MP3 file, but the, the creator of the browser, whoever makes the browser, so if it's Apple building Safari or Google making Chrome, they have to pay the licensing fees to have that technology inside their browser. And this creates a world of issues because most browsers, um, you know, if you think of like Firefox or the Mozilla corporation and you know it's kind of the browser for the people and they're very uh, open source minded and democratic and they stay away from things like this because they believe this is actually kind of counterproductive for the development of the web to use closed off technologies like this that will require licensing fees to use and they probably are right to an extent but the problem that you and I have with stuff like this when we're coding is that all of a sudden we have to support different file formats to different browsers for instance Mozilla uh, the audio file that they they support is what's known as an UG Vorbis file and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and uh, Og Vorbis is, I don't know about you, but I don't have a lot of Og Vorbis files on my computer. I don't play them a lot. So, you know, for me to like all of a sudden try to go through and, you know, recompress all my audio for that, that could be a bit of a pain. Uh, Firefox and Chrome support MP3 is just fine. Internet Explorer is kind of in the wild, depending on what version you have. It's mixed support. Um, so anyway, um, you know, you might want to be able to fall back to Flash if that's the case. But you want to be able to make it so no matter what browser your viewer is looking at your web page in it'll work so let's talk about this what we're going to do is let's take the source tag out of here for just a second and I'll take controls out too actually you can leave controls in if you want uh, controls what we're going to do spell it right um, I'm going to drop a line between the open and closed audio tags and there is also now a source tag so we're going to split this out and I'll show you why we're going to separate this into its own tag uh, let's go ahead and write source and if you want to, if you're an XHTML person and you want consistency you can self close this if you want and from the department of redundancy department uh, we have now the source and the attribute is going to be SRC so source the source is equal to and we'll put that link from the web back into that audio file it's going to be HTTP colon slash slash uh, classes dot ted forbes dot com slash examples slash class underscore uh, mp3 oh wait sorry <laughs> x dot mp3 um, okay so what what this is telling the browser now is okay if you can play an mp3 go ahead and do it in fact you can put also in this source tag another attribute for the type and we'll go ahead and put type equals audio slash mp or mpeg and so what that is telling the browser is, hey, if you support this this content type, uh, then this is the file you want to play. Now, the cool thing is, is that HTML5 has built uh, multiple support in here. So basically what you, what you use to do that are multiple source tags. So let's go ahead and I'll do another source tag. I'll just copy this one and paste it uh, since it really didn't matter. We won't actually play this back right now. Um, but uh, I'll go ahead and copy that and paste it in. Now, what we would need to do is have the file type here be source uh, OGG, which is the Og Vorbis file format. And you would also need an, um, a .ogg file. Okay, now this is where it gets a little confusing. What this is now telling the browser, first of all, you as the developer, you need to have two different files on the server. Now, just so you'll know, if you're going to test this example, I don't have an Ogvorbis file on the server, so that won't work. Um, I'm just giving you this to show you. Um, but anyway, what you're going to be dealing with here is, okay, so it's going to see the audio controls, and the browser starts reading down. It's going to say the source equals, and then it looks for this link. This is the Ogvorbis file. So if this is Firefox, we're good to go. It's going to play this. If it can't support that, it's going to continue going on. So MP3 would be the next. So this basically is a way of falling back. So if the first one fails, the browser will try the second one and so on and so forth. You could also drop down, and since we're not actually, um, you know, have these objects on here, um, you could do the object tag, object uh, you, for the type equals application slash x dash shockwave dash flash and so on and so forth and the data and all that and so we can actually and uh, object I want to shortcut this just in the sake of time here um, but you could actually have a flash player built in flash or excuse me an audio player built in flash and this also uh, usually has some kind of parameter value uh, name equals movie um, 
value equals player dot SWF, whatever you've got in here. So anyway, and then as a final fallback, and this is um, another cool thing to do, you can, as a last result, if the browser won't play any of these, you can put a link to download the file. And so let's go ahead and put a link and uh, we say download the file. Okay. So what this now does is I've kind of created a, the ultimate fallback system here. Um, I have the audio tag. It's going to turn the controls on if it can do so. It's going to read the first tag, and it being the browser, and the browser is going to read the first one. And if it supports the Ogvorbus format, it will go ahead and play that as the audio file. If it doesn't, it will go to the next one, which is the MP3 format. If it doesn't support that, then, and this tag is really incomplete here, but it will go ahead and load Flash and put in a flash player um, and play the audio file through that. And then finally, and notice this is within the object tag because this is the default if your browser does not support flash, you can put a, a link to download the file. So we have all of our bases covered here. Okay, It seems like a lot of work. Um, I'm going to actually do some separate movies on some pre-built players and some really good solutions that will make things a little easier for you. But I want you to see how this works. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, it also requires a lot of production because you would have to need to have all three of these things. You need to have the Ogvorbus file format, the MP3 format, and the player .s, or the Swift file for the Flash. Now, um, up until recently, um, I was really in the fog about this, and it, you know, it, it's really difficult, especially with something like Ogvorbus. If you're on a Mac, you're not used to using that format. Um, however, let's go over to Safari for a second. Um, I found this website and I've tried this this little app and it's really nice. This is available for for pretty much everything, uh, Mac, Windows, uh, Linux, the whole thing. And this is the Miro Video Converter and the URL on this is MiroVideoConverter.com or you can Google that. <coughs> and so what this is is it's a it's basically a free application. You just download and put it on your computer. And what it allows you to do is just drag and drop a file onto here. You tell it what to convert to, and it'll do everything. And it's really nice. Here's all the supported formats down here. It'll it'll compress for mobile devices, and this does aug excuse me, it does audio and video, which is really nice. So if you have a uh, you know H.264 video file and you want to get an Aug Theora video file out of it, you just drag and drop to convert. Um, there really isn't any options in here as to you know uh, what you can do with the file size and the compression style and things like that. But it for just a quick down and dirty way of uh, being able to do your file format and transcoding. Um, I highly recommend this. Literally, let's say you just have an MP3 file, but you want to have the Ogvorbus format and you want to have your flash and all that. Uh, you go ahead and download this, drag and drop, and you're good to go. So anyway, that basically is how we're going to address multiple browsers. And the same is going to hold true for video. But we'll go into the video tag next and kind of keep that simple and then go out from there. So once again, thanks for watching.